What's up nerfers and welcome back to my channel where I test blasters like this one outdoors in real world conditions to bring you the results that I want to know. Today I'm taking a look at two new kinds of nerf rifling from Dart Zone. These were sent to me as a special request thanks to Out of Darts in the USA since Dart Zone don't ship to Australia. As a side note, that's also why I generally don't review Dart Zone blasters. Just have a look at the price one of the Australian resellers wants for a Mark IV. You could buy almost two Wacker Harriers for that and have better performance out of the box. Today I'll be testing these two B cars at a velocity of 300 feet per second since that's what we play out here. Now, considering Dart Zone's blasters are generally designed to shoot around half that out of the box, maybe a tiny bit higher, 170 or so, these are probably also designed for low FPS, but there's only one way to find out, right? So let's take a closer look at them and then get on with some testing. The Dart Zone Max Scarborough Pack costs 20 US dollars, which is actually pretty cheap if you live in the USA. And for your 20 bucks, you get two different styles of Nerf rifling. First up is what appears to be a clone of the really old Worker Plastic Scar or P-Car. It has six rifling grooves inside and it attaches to a 16 mil outer diameter barrel with a fairly snug friction fit. Just like the Worker equivalent, you can also attach it to Dart Zone Blast by mounting it backwards, shoved into the muzzle. The reason you need to do that is that Dart Zone don't allow their barrels to protrude from the shell like other manufacturers do. I think that design choice does make sense for them, by the way. For something aimed more at kids, you don't want them falling over and core sampling themselves on the metal barrel. Yeah, that could create some lawsuits. The second style of Dart Zone rifling is what we call a B car. It uses 12 bearings in three groups of four to add spin and has a fairly aggressive angle to them, which could actually add too much spin to the darts when used at 300 FPS. But we'll see how it goes in my testing. That also attaches to a 16 mm barrel with a fairly snug friction fit, but there's also an included insert for when you're shoving it in the muzzle of a Dart Zone blaster to help guide the darts into it more smoothly. Now, let's meet the competition. For a baseline today, I'll be comparing Dart Zone to the 8 degree flag and armor B car sold for 45 US dollars at Out of Darts. It's also available here in Australia from Foamwork and I'll put links to it down below. The Flag and Armor B car is constructed of fully CNC aluminium for great durability. It attaches to a 16mm barrel with a threaded locking nut similar to a garden hose. That's a bit of a step up over a friction fit and allows it to suit a wider tolerance of barrel sizes. The darts I'll be using today are worker bamboos provided by Foamwork. Let's begin with a chrono test. First up, I'm gonna do the dart zone plastic rifling. Let's see how it does. 295. 301. 297. To a, a 311. 307. 310. 310. 310 again, three times in a row. 314. 296. 288. 298. 311. 303. 305. And that's all 15 with the Dart Zone plastic rifling. All right, so now I'll take off the plastic Dart Zone rifling. Put on their B car and we'll see how that does. 310. 298. 312. 302. 298, 313, 310, 314, 311, and that's all 15. And now finally, taking this off, which is on there really tight, okay. We have finally the Flag and Armor All Metal CNC B car. Let's see how that one does, eh? 293, 292, 
294, 294, 302, 297, 301, 297, 308, 294, 314, 289, 306, 281, 305, and that's all 15 of those. Over the chrono, the Dart Zone B car had the highest average velocity at 307 feet per second. It also had the most consistent with a standard deviation of 6. In second place, the Dart Zone P car shot an average of 303 with a standard deviation of 7. And in third place, the Flag and Armor shot an average of 297 with a standard deviation of 8. While the Dart Zone rifling attachments won slightly in the chrono test, this never seems to really translate to the accuracy tests so it's still anyone's guess how these will actually perform let's find out okay guys this target here is one meter in diameter and i'll be standing 30 meters away which is 100 feet for your american viewers i've taken a couple of shots before i hit record and if i aim there by the time gravity pulls the shots down at 30 meters they're dropping around the center of the target i've got a shooting sandbag here which i'll rest the blaster on between shots I've got the plastic dart zone rifling on first. Let's see how it does. I'm also going to try and stop using the word hit after every single shot because at this range, every single shot should be a hit anyway. What else could we discuss instead? Perhaps the fact that despite Primetime Toys being based in Hong Kong, Dart Zone only shipped to the US and Canada, which kind of sucks. Not sure why they don't ship to Australia and other countries. It does end up making blasters very expensive if you want Dart Zone's blaster here. From memory, when I reviewed the Dart Zone Pro Mark 1, I, I paid about 300 Australian dollars for it. I'm pretty sure most of that, or at least half of that was shipping. So it definitely adds up. One more shot. All right, that's the plastic rifling done. Honestly, not too bad. Um, also, the, the friction retention of this is pretty strong. It's not gonna come off in a game, even shooting 300 FPS darts through it. Here is, difficult to even get on, the plastic B-car. Let's see how the Dart Zone B-car does. Hit. Oh my god, I said hit. Said I wasn't going to. These ones are going more to the right than the plastic scar was. A little bit of a fishtail there. That one I thought was going to go over the top, but then it changed direction within about a meter of the target. I suspect this uh, plastic B car is putting too much spin on the darts, which tracks because uh, the degree angle of this is pretty aggressive, uh, which is generally better for lower FPS blasters. Yeah, that missed. Curved way wide and went over to the top right. Um, the, the higher FPS your blaster is, the less spin you actually want from your beaker. So this, this probably works really well on their blasters that are like 170 FPS, 180 FPS. 
but on something like this you're gonna get shots that just go wildly wide like that one right there but you also get some pretty nice shots too and finally whack on the metal flag and armor beaker if I can even get this one off it's so tight now you don't even have to take this tightening nut all the way off you can just loosen it a bit push it on and then tighten it fresh mag let's see how the flag and armor does Yeah, that's like that's what we like to see. Oh. Yeah. Eight degrees, particularly with worker bamboos that get less contact on the bearings. Seems to be a sweet spot. It's what the flag and armor uses, it's the same angle that the Sabre B car uses. Much better suited to 300 FPS, I'd say. Yeah. Well, we had a little bit of a, a wide shot there. Could be a bad dart. But overall, this is doing way better than the dart zones were. All right, let's take it inside and compare all three. In red, the Dart Zone P car was what I tried first. It shot a 45 centimeter spread, which is not bad at all for a plastic rifling. Next in blue, I tried the Dart Zone B car. It shot a fairly miserable 1.2 meter spread, which is larger than the target. I suspect it puts too much spin on the darts and would be more suited to low stock Dart Zone velocities. Finally in purple, the Flag and Armor B car, due to two outliers on the left, shot a 45 centimeter spread as well, with the other 13 shots all falling within a 25 centimeter spread. I was a little on the fence about this one, so I put it out to a vote for you guys, and you chose the flag and armor B car in purple by a landslide. I guess it does make sense though, if you remove two outliers from both and then center them over each other, the flag and armor was the tighter spread. I was still very impressed by the Dart Zone P car though, and I think if you live in the USA or Canada where you can actually get your hands on the twin pack, for 20 US dollars. The P car is a great choice for 300 FPS blasters and it's very cheap as well. If you live outside the US or Canada though, the cost to get the Dart Zone pack is gonna be much closer to the price of the much more durable and slightly better performing CNC metal flag and armor B car. So for everyone that Dart Zone won't ship that to, I'd recommend having a look at the flag and armor from a local reseller instead. I'll put links to all three of these down below, but let me know what you guys think. Would you pick the Dart Zone pack or the flag and armor? And is that affected by where you live? Can you get the Dart Zone pack or is it going to be way expensive for you? That's all I have for you today. Like, comment, subscribe and all of that. Here's two other videos you might enjoy. And as always, thank you very much for watching. See ya.